I'm Anil Kumar sharing with you an excellent question on turning points. The question here is graph of the function f of x equals to ax to the power of n minus bx is symmetric about the origin and it has some turning points. Does the graph have even or odd number of turning points? You can pause the video, answer the question and then look into my suggestions. Let us first try to understand the question itself. It says graph of this function is symmetric about origin. So let me underline symmetric about origin. And what does this mean? If it is symmetric about origin, that means it has odd symmetry, right? It has odd symmetry. Since it has odd symmetry and it's this kind of a function, we know n is odd number. Odd positive number, right? So that is what we know. Now, further it says that and it has some turning points. Some means more than one. Some, more than zero, right? It has some turning points, right? Some turning points. So that means zero turning points is not permitted, right? Some turning points. Does the graph have even or odd number of turning points? We need to find number of turning points. So that is what we need to find, correct? Now, to explore, what we can do is, we can take few examples. Uh, let me rewrite the function. f of x as equals to a x to the power of n minus bx. Now, when that is the function, we could actually factor x out and see what remains. x is a common factor. So, x is factored. So, we get a x to the power of n minus 1 minus b. This shows that there is a zero at the origin, right? So, if I have to sketch this function, let me try to do it on the right side, then what we know is that it has a zero at the origin, that is this factor, right? And now we have one more factor. How many zeros will that factor lead to? That is still to be seen. So let's take some examples. Now, B for us has to be non-zero. So we know B is not equal to zero. Since if B is zero, then we get zeros only at zero. Do you understand? Then we get zeros only at zeros. So if there's only one zero, in that case, the graph of the function will be a power function, kind of like this. Is it okay? So this will be the graph of the function for b equal to 0. Now since there are turning points, some turning points, that means b is not 0. So that is what I wanted to tell you. Now let us take very simple example. Uh, let us assume that uh, n is equal to 3 and b is equal to 1. So in that case, we can write down a function y equals 2. So I'm replacing, and also, let me take a as also equal to 1, right? Very simple. So in that case, I could write this function as x times, when a is 1, this is 1 times x to the power of 3 minus 2, so which is x squared minus 1. Do you see that? So that will be the condition. Now this function gives us two zeros, the one at plus 1 and the other one as minus 1. So in that case, we'll have a graph which will be kind of like this. Do you see that? So it is just an approximation. So where we'll have two zeros, one at minus 1, the other one at plus 1. Important thing here to note is that it has two turning points, right? So turning point number 1 and turning point number 2. So it has two turning points. <coughs> so 2 is an even number so we can say it has even number of turning points right but to be very specific it has only two turning points now 
if I increase the power of n to let's say some other number, let's say 5, it has to be odd, right? n has to be odd number. So let me write down another function, let's say g of x. This time I'll use this equation. We are using a as 1, b as 1, right? And we'll write this function as x to the power of, let us say 5 minus 1. Now this 5 minus 1, we can, I mean, 1 times x is x. Okay, so b is 1. We can factor out x, we get x to the power of 4 minus 1. And this one also gives us similar graph. <coughs> However, when the power increases, then it kind of becomes steeper, right? It kind of becomes steeper. The zeros are at the same place, right? So, in this particular case, we will notice that the graph is kind of like this a bit steeper so I'm just approximating the kind of like this but still we'll have the zeros at two places symmetric about origin since the function has odd symmetry right so zeros will be symmetric however if we have a general equation like given to us in that case uh, we could rewrite the equation let me do it here itself. Let me rewrite this equation. f of x as equals to, let me factor x now from this equation. So we get a x to the power of n minus 1 minus b. So that gives us two zeros. One zero is at x equals to 0 and the other one is at x equals to, when you make this 0, we take b to the other side. So we get b divided by a with n minus 1 at root, right? Since this is even, it will be plus and minus. Do you get the point, right? So, so we get this as plus and minus. So two zeros symmetrically placed. So in general, for a function like this, we'll have a graph where these zeros will be square root of b over a on this side minus and this root will be n minus 1, right? So this will be on this side, it will be square root of b over a with n minus 1 at root. Is, is that okay? So those will be the zeros. So depending on the value of b and a, these points will change. If n is large, then b kind of steeper. Are you getting the idea, right? So. So we're just experimenting with b and a as 1, mm -hmm. therefore it was 1. But if b is 2 and a is 1, in that case b square root of 2 for degree n equals to 3. So what you can do is you can sketch different graphs and figure out the answer. What we notice is that this function, the number of turning points will always be 2, right? So there will be only two turning points. Since the question is even or odd, we will say, it has even number of turning points, number of turning points. However, the number is exactly 2. It will not be 4, 6, 8. If, if the degree n is, let's say, 10, or I mean n is 11, it is not going to be uh, 4, 6, 8. It is only going to be 2. So that is kind of important to understand. I hope that helps. Thank you and all the best.